In this video, I'm going to go through some of the features of the Cisco Spectrum Expert application and show you how to customize the interface to your personal preference or just show you maybe things that you didn't realize uh, were hidden menus because um, not everything that you can change and adjust really jumps out at you the first time you use this application. I'll also play back some Spectrum captures that I've gathered together over the years uh, and show you some strange captures and maybe get you more familiar with what you're looking at in the main display. What you see in this display here are all of my favorite plots for the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz frequencies. The main ones for your 2.4 gigahertz network are the real-time FFT, the FFT duty cycle, and then I also like the SWEP spectrogram where it shows the max uh, of the SWEP spectrogram and also I like the one that shows the duty cycle so it can show you how much of the duty cycle is being used uh, visually. Uh, I, ha I have the same charts shown for the lower part of the 5 gigahertz frequency band. You can see when I select this module here the color changes from the blue to the to the orange color which tells you that that's the module that you've got selected and then from there over on the left hand side you have the ability to change things in the control panel for the module that you have selected. The things that you can change are the frequency, the center frequency span, the start stop frequency or you can have it display by channel where you can have just a specific channel and how much of that channel you want to be displayed. I typically leave in the center frequency span. I believe that's the default setting. Okay, let me close this one out. Plot real time FFT. Let me change it to. You can turn on different traces so that it will trace the average or hold the maximum that's detected. And when I double click this, it brings it up into full page view and as you mouse over things you can see devices that are affecting channel 40 or devices that are checking channel 56 and you can see that there's nothing no, channel 34 is not being monitored because it's not available in the US so as you mouse over the the capture or the live stream in this case you can get additional information about what's going on uh, when I double click this again it goes back to its minimized size in with the rest of the the charts. I also have the ability to change um, if I want devices to be shown I can cha I can turn that off so when I hover over the the display nothing is shown. If I want to show the power I can show the power of trace 1 or trace 2 which would be the average if I'm not mistaken trace 2 Yes, is the average trace one is the max and trace three is the max hold. So you can have the power displayed up at the top, which can be helpful. Um, trace three or none. You also have the ability to change uh, or add markers. And you can see the little white box popped up with a marker saying uh, devices that are affecting trace one and it would say none. So we could turn off the markers. Uh, the FFT duty cycle has the same sort of configurable interface off to the left. Um, I'm going to go into the 2.4 gigahertz because this is where the typical action is with regard to sources of interference or neighboring Wi-Fi networks. And you can see I have on all three traces. The first one is the max. Uh, max hold will show you the max of the overall the, the, the last high spot that was detected, the last hottest signal strength that was detected and trace 2 is our average overall. You can see uh, I have about anywhere between 18 to 20 SSIDs that are detected. Within this module here I have the ability to change the center frequency span or change the band itself that I'm trying to capture. So keep in mind if you're not seeing what you think you should be seeing you can um, go into the control panel for any module that you have selected to make sure that you're scanning the correct channels or you're showing the d data that you actually want to, to show. This web spectrogram I have showing the max so as we hover over it you can see the devices that are being affect are affecting channel 8 or 10 or what have you and you can mouse over and get information about the SSIDs that are affecting given channels. Um, you can adjust the color scale for maximum and minimum of DBM detected. You can show the devices or not show the devices. See when I mouse over the chart now I get no devices that are shown. 
Um, you can also change the trace type. You can show average, max, or duty cycle. So depending upon your preference, you can have just one chart showing the swept spectrogram, or you can have many charts showing different features of the swept spectrogram. See, this is the duty cycle, and we can see where there are devices affecting the RF or utilizing the RF, you will see white spots um, because of the percentage of duty cycle that's actually being used. I'm going to tab over into the Devices tab. In this display here, you can see the list of SSIDs, their signal strength, and the percentage of duty cycle that's being utilized. You can see the discovery time, how long you've been capturing or how long you've been detecting, um, how long your adapter's been enabled. You can see the channels that are affected, and you can see the MAC address of the access point that is being detected by the Spectrum Analyzer application. You can look at this in a list or a tree view where you can expand and contract the different tree sections and I only have access points being detected here but if you had different things like ad hoc networks or Bluetooth devices or sources of uh, fixed frequency interference you would see different headers with the access points or the uh, de detected devices displayed underneath the the descriptive header of what type of device it is you can have the historic range show currently active, things that were active in the last 10 minutes or the last hour or the last day if this has been running in sensor mode and capturing data for a day. So as things disappear from your screen and you want to see them, you can actually say, show me everything that was detected within the last 10 minutes. And you can see the screen gets completely f filled with information based upon things that were detected in the last 10 minutes. If I go to the last hour, the, it gets even more populated. Um, but if I just go into currently active, you can see the 17 access points that are currently detected by my wireless card or my spectrum analyzer card. And I can change um, it. Do I want to see what is affecting all channels or do I want to see the, the 5 gigahertz channels or do I want to see the higher 5 gigahertz channels? But if I display all of them, you'll see everything in the list. I can look at the channel summary and see what channels have Wi-Fi present and what the current percent utilization is. Uh, lots of good information about the current SNR, how many access points are detected on a given channel. Uh, on the Spectrum main tab, you can see the channel utilization. You can see how much of the channel is being utilized. You can look at the interference power and see how many access points are operating at what signal strength in, in what channel of what band. You can get a pie chart here showing how many access points are active in the network. Uh, as you have different devices in different categories populate your display, this pie chart will show that and it won't just be access points. You will have Bluetooth devices or microwaves. Um, you can look at the channel utilization versus time and have three different charts uh, for 1, 6, and 11. Trace number 4 could be any of the channels that you're detecting, any of the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz channels that you're detecting. So you can have multiple charts running at the same time showing your channel utilization versus time for all of the main non-overlapping channels if, if you ch so chose. You also have the ability to find a specific device, basically turn on um, the detection of that single device and you would do that by saying, by finding the SSID in the list and say find this device and then the Spectrum Expert application hones in on just that specific device and you could start recording the signal and you would be able to tell whether or not you're getting closer or farther away from the device if you're trying to visually locate it based upon the current signal strength here. Uh, as you got closer to it the signal strength would get higher and the number, the DBM number would get lower. So I'm going to navigate into some, to some other captures that I have and show you show you some interesting data that I've collected or that friends of mine have collected so that you'll have seen different types of devices at least once before if you've never used the Cisco Spectrum Expert application before. In this capture here, this is a capture actually that Sam Clements uh, sent to me when he was doing a survey of a clinic with an MRI machine and apparently when the MRI machine is on this is the data that was detected by his Spectrum Expert card when the MRI was operating. So as you can see here we have the tree view, we have a generic continuous device affecting channel 161, 
a fixed frequency device affecting channels 1 through 14 and using 92% of the duty cycle. Now if you think of the duty cycle as an overall bandwidth available for a given frequency, 92% of the entire 2.4 gigahertz spectrum was being adversely affected by this single fixed frequency device. This fixed frequency device was taking up 98% of the duty cycle of channels 149 through 157. This device here is taking up 64% of the duty cycle for channels 34 through 42. So that being said, this single device here affecting channels 1 through 14 is effectively killing the possibility that any of these access points would actually be able to send or receive data or clients would actually be able to send or receive data. It would initiate um, all kinds of windowing and retries and basically the wireless network wouldn't work when the MRI machine was in use. You can see over here on the Spectrum Analyzer tab we're looking at the real-time FFT and you can see the entire spectrum is adversely affected and the duty cycle is off the chart here at 98 percent for the entire 2.4 frequency. Uh, you can also see the pie chart where we have generic fixed frequency devices and access points and you can see the channel utilization over time for channels 1, 6, and 11. You can see the channel utilization, you can see the fixed frequency devices are using up the majority of the available spectrum in any given channel in the 2.4 gigahertz range. I'm going to click play to play this back so you can see this information change as the capture plays back. When you play back a capture, it's exactly the same view that you saw when you were recording the capture, so you're able to refer to this data once you're no longer at the site where you made the initial recording. And if I click over into the devices, you'll be able to see the duty cycle percentage will change. Um, you'll be able to see the signal strength of the device will also change. And if you look at the charts here, you can see this is the swept spectrogram for the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, showing the duty cycle and you can see that the pinks and the reds are off the chart for the duty cycle. I'm going to make this one full screen so you can see what I'm referring to. You can see that reds are 100% utilization of the duty cycle. So needless to say the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is incredibly adversely affected by the MRI machine being in operation. This next capture I'm going to show you is also another one that Sam Clement sent to me uh, and a couple other people where he was not sure what he was actually seeing and enlisted the help of some people and uh, essentially determined, essentially finally determined that it was a bad spectrum analyzer card after much testing in comparison against a known working card. What he was seeing were these really, really strange RF patterns in the 5 gigahertz spectrum and different continuous devices coming and going with no real explanation because he wasn't close to any kind of weather radar Doppler or any kind of airport or anything like that and as I play this back you'll see some really strange RF patterns in the 5 gigahertz frequency and typically the 5 gigahertz frequencies are very quiet there's not usually a lot going on so to see this kind of activity in the 5 gigahertz um, is very very unusual and uh, like I said the the problem was ultimately deemed to be a bad wireless card so that's why it's really important to be familiar with your tools know what a normal wireless network looks like, know what a non-working wireless network looks like, and be able to determine based upon your knowledge of both of those situations that this type of abnormal behavior is most likely the result of a hardware problem rather than an actual wireless network issue. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your display. If you see something that's completely abnormal that you've never seen before, compare your card against another card, enlist the, the input of uh, friends or coworkers that can help you determine is it a problem with your card or is it a problem with the software because you want to make sure that the cards and the tools that you're using to troubleshoot wireless networks are actually reliable and calibrated and functioning properly. This capture that I have here has a couple of cordless phones and the HP setup Wi-Fi ad hoc network.